All right, this article comes to us from PB and Ray. Um, it's called, um, If It Fits Your Macros, Greater Than or Equal to or Greater Than Intuitive Eating by Ray Chill from her blog. And it's a blog post from November 16th, 2015. Again, If It Fits Your Macros, Equal to or Greater Than Intuitive Eating. I think what has made my transition to intuitive eating so much smoother is my history with if it fits your macros and the knowledge base that diet has given me if it fits your macros gave me insight as to the types of foods that would provide me with certain nutrients and how to create a specific balance of each in my diet i tracked my macros fats carbs proteins while i was bulking maintaining as well as when I was cutting. Many times too, I would eat a lot of the same meals and same types of foods. So I became very familiar with the portion sizes of the staple foods in my diet that I should eat to hit each of those goals. I absolutely loved If It Fits Your Macros and still do love the concept of it. It helped me hit each of my goals and provided me with amazing results. I have no regrets with experimenting with this diet because it helps to this day with intuitive eating when I think I need a little something to lean back on to make sure I'm not, I'm on the right track and I'll explain why in a sec. My shift to intuitive eating was a slow and gradual one. Since I had been tracking weighing food for a while and most of the food I would eat was the same food, I started to get a good idea of what certain portions of those foods would look like. For instance, I have oatmeal for breakfast almost every morning and I usually have one serving which is 40 grams. After eating 40 grams of oats basically every morning for so long, I have a pretty good idea of what 40 grams of oats typically looks like. To start straying away from weighing it out or weighing out my food, I started with my 40 grams of oats for breakfast. I started to not weigh out the 40 grams of oats in the morning and just eyeball the portion instead, knowing I would be pouring around the 40 grams I wanted. How many times can one person type 40 grams in a, por- in a paragraph? Ha, <laughs> jokey, jokey, whatever. After I felt comfortable with using the scale for breakfast, I added another meal into the mix. I would generally pack the same lunch for work, so by knowing and seeing what I had packed in the past, that was the next meal I started eyeballing the portions for. I really started to get the hang of this new system I created and started to get more accustomed to it. I think that helped me mentally through this process. I think, excuse me, I think what helped me mentally through this process was how gradual I did it as well as how familiar I was with the foods I was choosing to eat. If I chose to have something different for breakfast or for lunch, I would weigh it out the first time I included that meal in my diet for days so that I would know its macros and know how it fit in my diet. By knowing that information, it made me feel more comfortable to try and intuitively portion that meal into my regime again. So then every other day I had that meal, I would not weigh it, but just try to estimate the serving to mirror that first time I had it. Aside from weighing, tracking new meals randomly just to feel more comfortable mentally, there are other occasions that I whip the scale out just as a little security blanket. When I first started ditching the scale completely and wasn't tracking a single meal, 
I noticed my mind would wander back to its restrictive eating days. Since I was eyeballing my meal portion, I did not want to overestimate the amount that I gave myself, so I started underestimating them. I knew that that wasn't the healthiest way to go about things, but it was something I couldn't control. After noticing this, I decided to track a random day of eating based on my guesstimated portions just to see the amount of food I was consuming. And I was right, I was under eating, but not by a lot. I was actually really proud of myself for intuitively eating pretty successfully for quite some time. Seeing that I was under eating by just a tad though, I picked the scale up for a day. I weighed, tracked out a day of eating of portion sizes that were what I needed and then the next day I imitated those portions without the scale. The only other times I find myself tracking weighing my food are on the rare occasion that I want to see what a typical day of eating would look like for a certain goal I, ha I may have, such as if I want to eat in a surplus or to maintain or to make sure I'm eating enough protein, etc. But then I would put the scale away for a while uh, after that and rely on my body to tell me what it wants and what it feel what it's feeling even though most of the time it's ice cream transitioning to intuitive eating was a difficult and mentally taxing battle but definitely worth it in the end it has helped me gain a healthy relationship with food and now i actually enjoy going out to grab a bite to eat and not feeling extremely guilty about it like i would before i'm proud to say that i almost never use the scale anymore and I'm starting to actually listen to my body and it's proving to be very beneficial for me. Food is food and it's meant to be enjoyed.